Okay, I think I am recording the session now. But in any how, it's a good idea that you go and repeat what I'm doing. Sure. Uh, okay, so please make a right click and select open attribute table. This is gonna bring a database. This database is the information associated with each and every segment of a road. So if you select a single one and you make a right click and say zoom to selected, this is gonna zoom to the selected portion of road that you have this specific characteristic. That arrow over there will bring you back to the previous zoom. And evidently, if you select some of these, they will be highlighted somewhere in there. But the important message now is that you have information associated with every segment of road. In this case, for instance, we have annual average daily traffic. We have the daily traffic of trucks. So in this first section, we have 7,709 vehicles per day on average. 2,300 trucks is quite a bit, it's quite significant. How you got to the table? Like this. You see here where I have Montreal? So you make a right click here, okay? So just make a right click, open attribute table. Sorry guys, uh, sometimes people write to me on the chat on private so you don't see. Sometimes it's to everybody so you do realize, but uh, I'm just repeating so you can find the table of attributes. The pavement condition index is 65. This is in a scale zero to 100 for the year 2010. The pavement condition index in the year 2009 was 46. So you know that these receive some pavement, some repairs. The equivalent single axle loads are 8 million 500, yeah, eight and a half million roughly. This is uh, how heavy is the traffic load. You cannot find Montreal in catalog. It depends where you put it, where did you save it? Okay, Arash is taking care of that one. The type of structure is a flexible pavement, it's a local road, it has 120 meters. That's about it. The rest of the information is for the pavement management system. It's team one, two, three, four, five. This is for the pavement management system. In the table of attributes, you can manipulate the information. You can create new uh, fields. So right here on this corner, you can do some stuff, but I'm not gonna show you that yet. So recapping, we have the map and we have some attributes. Okay. So I want you guys to close. So I'm gonna here on the layers, I'm gonna make a right click and say remove. I'm gonna remove this file for now. The space where I had the map, has a coordinate system. You can see on the bottom right that you have some indication of meters. We can see this indication also in other coordinate systems. So if you make a right click, if you make a right click on top of this blank space and you select data frame properties, and you click on it, In my case, the Montreal I was looking at was on the North America datum, not 1983. 
uh, Hunter, you don't have to open Montreal right now. Uh, you can, we can just uh, concentrate on this one because I'm actually going to open somewhere else and we can go back to Montreal very soon. I want you guys, we're going to change coordinate system and we're going to change, for instance, for uh, Qatar. Uh, so we're going to type the name of their coordinate system is QND. So I'm going to type it here. This is because I know how their coordinate system is called, but I want to show you these, the projections that we have. And I'm going to click enter. Now it has bring to very few options and we have it right here, the coordinate system. I'm gonna accept that coordinate system because this is the one where I want to do a projection. So the purpose is for you to see what is a projection. Is everybody here with me? I can repeat, you make a right click on top of this blank space. You select data frame properties. And you have many coordinate systems. As a matter of fact, you have two types geographic and projected. And in the projected, you have for all the continents and all the countries. So it's quite difficult actually to go. For instance, you see here in Canada, you have different regions and different systems. In our case, I wanna take a specific uh, projection because I know that projection is gonna distort and you will understand with that distortion what I mean by the projected system. So I'm selecting this one, or you can just simply come here and type QND, which is the system I'm selecting. So we're gonna select this one and we're gonna say, okay. So click okay. I want you now to come here where my pointer is, and I want you to select add data. Uh, Tiang Li, you put the Montreal fold, you save the Montreal data in a folder, wherever you want. If you are on Moodle, you simply, let me see, no. Uh, so you can maybe the save link as, uh, no, it's not the save link as. You just click on it and then you say download folder and the folder will download in a specific place. It is a zip, that means it's compressed. Once you download this compressed file, you take your compressed file and you put it in the folder you want. I'm gonna put it here in desktop. And then you make a right click on it and you say extract to Montreal Che file and that will extract all the files into a folder, this folder. If you go inside that folder, you will have the same files. The one that you downloaded is a compressed file. So you cannot open from here. RGIS will not recognize it. RGIS will recognize only this one. Okay, I hope that clarified. So I want you to go here and select add base map. I am assuming that if nobody is asking, it's because you can follow what I'm doing. So you click on Add Base Map. We're gonna bring a light canvas maybe because it's faster and we don't have such a good connection, but you can bring raster images. It may take longer. So we're gonna select the light gray canvas for now. And we're gonna say Add.
we have to wait a few seconds. But can you see the world looks like an egg? It looks very distorted. And this is why we call it a projection, because it's how we stretch the real planet to represent the surface. In this case, this projection is used by the Middle East countries. It's evidently not used by Canada or other Northern countries. But when you go into a specific place, the projection will bring everything in a flat shape nice that we can utilize. How do we remove the light canvas? You just make a right click and you say remove, you make a right click, you say remove and it's gone. I want you to go again, add a base map, and now we're gonna bring imagery. So go ahead and click add. I'm gonna make a pause there waiting for, to see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, and you never let me know if you were successful downloading the folder and extracting. What, what was the first base map? Oh, you were opening the light canvas, but that was only for the projection hunter. So you can just uh, click on imagery. That will be fine. It was this one, but open this one. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that. This one will take a few more seconds, but what I want you to uh, understand from this is once we have a projection, and I think this really shows you why it is projected because of the way we stretch. I am gonna go again ahead and zoom. This system was developed for this country. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but this is Saudi Arabia, this is Bahrain, this is Qatar, and United Arab Emirates will be here. So this was developed for Qatar. I'm gonna zoom in and we should be able to see the roads. You see? We can actually see the roads now. And that means, uh, yes, I will upload it probably in a YouTube channel or something like that, the recording, so it's available for everybody. But please try to follow what I'm doing. It's important because just by watching what I'm doing is not gonna teach you uh, how to operate this. What I wanna show you is that we can trace a road. Let's imagine that we want to connect this intersection, this, this interchange with this interchange up here. I'm gonna zoom so you can see there is an interchange here. You see, there's an interchange here. Okay, so that one is right here. I'm connecting this with this one over here. So the way to do that is by creating some points. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some points. To do that, I go into the editor. Uh, no, pardon, not yet. Uh, let me see, I have a question. Where should you zoom in? I was zooming in here. You see where my magnifying glass is? But that was only to show you that there is an interchange there. You don't have to zoom. So if you do zoom, you click on that to go back to the previous extent. and I select the pointer again here. I'm gonna put points of intersection. You guys took surveying, right? And in surveying, you learn a bit about points of intersection and you took uh, CV 372, transportation engineering. So you should have learned about vertical uh, curves. Oh, that's what you meant by zooming in. Yeah, the country is Qatar. So I'm going to 
in this folder, make a right click. So I'm making a right click in the folder where I'm working and I'm selecting new shapefile. Again, in the folder, your folder will be called different, right? You, it will be any folder you have created. You make a right click, you say new, and you say shapefile. Okay, so click on shapefile, and we are going to define a new shapefile that I'm gonna call points of intersection. I'm just gonna call it POI. Uh, in RGIS, all these symbols don't work. They will make your system crash. And also you cannot have spaces on the names. Everything has to go all together. The format will be point, but please notice you can have polylines, polygons, and other things. How to add a new shape file? On the folder, make a right click. Which folder? Any folder you want, but most likely the one you are working on. New shape file. Okay. Sorry, Professor. If you have any question, please let me know. I will take care of that, guys. Okay. Now, I don't know what happened with the shape file I was creating. Uh, is it still there? No, disappear probably. Yeah, I think the chip file I was adding disappeared, so I'm going to have to add it again. So I'm calling it point of intersection. The format is point. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw points on the map. And then those points will be the foundation for the road that I will do the geometric design. Remember, after all, this is highway design. And the portion of highway design is the geometric design. And the location of the road requires of these points. The coordinate system, I'm going to click here on edit. here on edit, okay? So edit, I expand the projected, or as a matter of fact, I just type here Q and D because I know that's the system. And then expand the projected national grid Asia, and that is my system. I'm gonna wait, so you can do it. Is everybody with me? Okay, so I'm gonna click there and say, okay. Now it is defined here, the coordinate system. That means those points will be in the correct system. The M are measurements and the Z are elevations. If you want to give elevations, you can do so, but I don't have that, so I'm gonna leave it blank for now. And we're gonna click on OK. You see I have my new shape file here. I am highlighting it. That shape file is also here. Here, you see? But is blank. If I open the table of attributes, it will be blank. I have nothing because I have not draw any points. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna populate this with points. Now, you see probably that I have some tanks or utilities or something is going on here 
maybe some lagoons and I have some developments here and I have another development here. So I need to be careful with this built environment that I have when I'm tracing my new road. Arash is the one who is answering, but I can answer as well. We have Shen. Okay, there is Arash, so you can ask him. He is helping me answer questions, but you can answer, you can ask me as well. Sad. If you have problems with the VPN, uh, that is something. Uh, I'm not sure if Arash can help you. Were you able to connect? No, the software cannot be downloaded directly. Uh, what you can try is to get a trial version in the meantime. Okay, guys, I'm gonna continue here. And you see there's something else here developed. So let's zoom in. Okay, it appears it's like agriculture. So we need to be careful when we are tracing our road because we don't want to hit any of those. So maybe a better choice and a better option is to start my road somewhere over here. This looks more empty in between these two. And then I can go up and arrive to my intersection. I have something here like a little village. You see? So I cannot go over it. Okay, so the consideration is you need to avoid uh, any built environment. We're gonna draw it now. So I'm gonna start here, but I will trace it in a way that I avoid this village. So I go to editor and I hit start editing. So editor, start editing. Editor, editing options, create features. I'm gonna leave it open and make a pause so you can go and find it. Please click on that. Okay, so create features. This is going to change the display on the right-hand side of your screen. You will see you have your POI, so click on it. When you click on it, the construction tools at the bottom will change. Now you can insert a point. To insert a point, we click on this. I am, on the top, I am on the bottom right of the screen. So I click on the point. And now I bring my cursor and I insert my first point. Let's say there. I will insert my second point, let's say there. I will insert the next point, let's say there. Now, what criteria am I using to insert this point? Basically, I am avoiding any built environment I have, whether our industries, residential, railways, anything that is built. I'm going through bare land because that is the way I have to pay less in expropriation cost. We will have a full lecture 
on Tuesdays. Uh, I think in one or two Tuesdays from now that we will talk about what considerations I, I do have when I'm doing this. For now, just avoid any built environment. If you need to drag, you can pan. If you want to bring, come back to the insertion of points, you can just hit escape or you can come back and say point. At the bottom right, you go and click again on point. That will bring again the point uh, tool. And there is the next road where I want to connect. I come back on the bottom right, click on point, and I click inserting my points. When you are finished, you make a right click, no, pardon. Uh, when you are finished, uh, I think uh, we just click on, Uh, no, I just click on and I just escape, sorry. When you are finished, we come here and we say save edit. So I'm gonna wait some time so you can go and finish putting your points. You don't have to put as many points as I did, but put some points on the, in there. Yes, you can uh, come to the 545 session if you wish, Bo Ying, that's fine. Okay, so I have my points. In my case, I'm finished putting points. Remember, you have to save it. So save edits, editor, save edits. And then editor, stop editing. The points that I have added, will be there now. In my case, I added 14 points. In your case, maybe more, maybe less. There is no information associated to these points yet. I will bring to these points the coordinates because I need to know where they are and it's important to know the coordinates. So I'm going to repeat how I brought the table. You see here you have your points on the left. You make a right click and open attribute table. I'm going to trust everybody did that. On the top left, you have the table options this one over here click on it and we are going to select add field actually we're going to do it two times i'm going too fast i'm sorry faris where did i get you lost Faris Tony Yabur, where did I get you lost? If you tell me, I go back. No problem. Your ad fill option is not coming. Oh, you haven't saved and end the editing. So that means you are not following what I'm doing. If that is the case, your ad field is disabled because you have not stopped editing. So you have to save and then you have to stop editing. Okay. Now, when you go, your ad field will come. 
uh, Faris, I'm not sure if I went as far back as you need me to. Okay, I'm gonna hope yes. Okay, so guys, add field and you have this pop-up window, all right? So we're gonna call it coordinate X or you can call it longitude if you remember from uh, survey. I'm gonna call it coordinate X. Okay, so look at the options. Your integer is a small whole number, one, two, three, four, five. Long integer is a large amount without decimals. So it will be 1,234,779, but you don't have decimals. A float will allow for decimals. A double, will allow for a number with decimals or text, either. Text is only text and the date is only the date. So for the coordinate, use, it's evident we cannot use a short integer. We need to use a float because the float is a number with decimals. So hit on float and hit on okay this new column appears. It is blank and we're gonna populate it soon. However, I'm going to add another field, which is gonna be the coordinate Y or the latitude. Coordinate Y, float, okay. Is everybody with me? Otherwise say no on the chat. Okay, good. Look guys, I'm gonna come with the pointer on top of coordinate X. You see it turned to be like a little arrow pointing downwards and you make a right click. I'm gonna repeat that. I bring my pointer to the header for coordinate X and I make a right click. And I'm going to select calculate geometry. I'm gonna wait a few seconds. For those of you who might be thinking when and how am I gonna use this software ever in my life, you will be very surprised. <laughs> if you end up in a consulting or the government, chances are you will have to deal with this. We put here the information for everything. Pipelines, railways, roads, metro systems, buildings, soccer fields, cities, landfills, environmental facilities, protected zones, and for construction management, when you have to have your landfill, uh, your dump site, uh, the borrow pit, the location of your uh, paving plans, and the condition of your assets, everything will come in this interface. Okay, so we'll hit on calculate geometry. Again, right click, calculate geometry. Look at the properties. We have X coordinate, Y coordinate. So this is the X coordinate. And look why I insisted on having the right coordinate system because now the coordinate will be calculated based on that projection. And I know that is the projection the country accepts on the designs. For Montreal will be North America that to 1983, 18 North. But for this country is the QND 95. The units could be set in meters or decimal degrees. For now, I am going to keep them in meters, but I will show you soon what it is uh, the decimal degrees. As you can expect, decimal degrees will be uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. But I'm going to keep it on meters and I'm going to say OK. Now I have the coordinates for my points. X. I do the same for the Y coordinate.
I make a right click and I say calculate geometry. In the calculate geometry, I select the Y coordinate. I will keep the same by default and I will click on OK. So now my points have coordinates. That means now I can go and take these points and bring them wherever I want. So I will show you. I can go where I save this file. This file was saved in this folder in here. So I can go to that folder and open them in Excel. you will take the one that is called DBF. Before you open this, you will copy this somewhere else. Because if you open from this one, you will damage the shape file you have down there. It will get corrupted. So you will take the one that is extension DBF, extension database. And this one, when I put it on desktop, and I'm going to open my Excel and I'm going to open this and you will see it's exactly the same data that I had in RGIS. The type of file needs to be adjusted to the base files. I'm going to wait because I know you are probably opening Excel. You need to change the type of file to be the base. When you change this to the base, the POI will appear. So now you can take it and say open. In this case, I have an ID that is not populated yet. We're going to talk about that one in a moment, but I do have the coordinates. The ID is very important because it's how you distinguish one point from the other one. I hope everybody's here with me. I'm gonna go back to my points. I barely see them. I don't know if this happens to you but it's difficult to see where they are. So you can come here with the pointer and you see you have a little icon. You can click on the icon. And when you click on the icon, it will bring the possibility to change the icon to anything you like. So in my case, I'm gonna choose this circle, very big and very bright. I'm gonna make it red so I cannot miss it. No, not on Moodle, Faris. Uh, Moodle doesn't accept videos of more than 20 minutes. So I will have to post it in a YouTube channel and share with you the link. But please try to follow what I'm doing because this same process I'm doing right now, you will have to use this same process to bring the road segment that you will design in Civil 3D for the geometric design. But to make sure that that road match a database and the projection and the coordinate system, you have to create it here in the mapping interface as I'm doing today.
Well, the more you practice, the better you are for getting a job. And that's the that's probably what everybody's targeting now, right? Uh, to not finish your uh, bachelor's degree. So I'm gonna insert this rather big point and I'm gonna say, okay, now the points are clear where they are. Uh, yes, my Excel was showing the same. Like that. Because the field is not big enough to show the whole thing. So you double click or you drag it and now it will show. Okay, the other thing you can do is we don't really need all those zeros, so you can just highlight the whole thing and you can go to format. And in format, you can just say, why do I need 11 decimal places? Just one or two is more than enough. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to zoom out a bit to be able to see the whole segment. So this is my segment, but these are only PIs. I will not do any further design. My design will be now based on Civil 3D, not here, okay? But these points are the foundation for my design down there. Now, I want to show you a couple more things from RGIS. You can prepare some quick visualization. If you go to the view menu, on the view menu, you click on view and then layout view. This will bring your map into this interface. I want to show the entire country and where is this located and then the zoom into this. So I want to have an extra frame to show in a different level of zoom. So I'm gonna pan first. It is clear that my road is there, but I want to show in the entire context of the country. So I'm gonna go again to insert and I'm gonna select insert data frame. I'm just waiting a few seconds to make sure everybody's with me. This will bring a new data frame here. You can actually, if you want, you can select the other data frame and you can uh, shrink it a bit. Or you can keep it in the same size. It doesn't really matter. This data frame doesn't have any information on it. So I will go back to my catalog and I will drag again the POA file from here. From here on the right hand side, I click on it, I drag it and then I drop it there. And I will also bring the base map, but in this case, I will come here to this uh, icon. I will click on add base map. In this case, I'm gonna bring the light canvas. I will now click on the full extent. I'm gonna wait a few seconds because I know probably the canvas is loading on your computers. So 
So I will go here and click on the full extent. It looks like a world. And now I'm gonna zoom into the country itself. So I'm gonna increase the points. maybe eight and this shows me globally where my alignment is and this shows me the other one i will put a scale now so we're gonna go to insert the scale bar i'm gonna wait a few seconds so you can find it I happens to like this scale bar better than the others. It's my personal choice. If you like any other one, it's fine. I'm gonna click OK. The scale bar arrives in the middle, but it belongs to this map up here. I'm actually gonna uh, make them separate. And I'm actually gonna flip the image. So uh, what I did is I click on the other one and I just uh, drag the corner. What I want you to do is go there to that icon that is called change layout. We're gonna use it. So we're gonna click on the change layout and we're gonna select one that is landscape. And we're just gonna say next and finish. Uh, in my case, there is a glitch, but the other map is down here. For some reason, landed there, so I have to bring it back here. I'm not sure if that's going to happen to you. I'm just playing with the cosmetics basically here. Nothing more. And of course, if you have further information, you can bring it into the map. This is something you probably don't have, but I just wanna show you. So if, for instance, you happen to know where the metro will be. Ah, may I need to bring it somewhere else, remove. Sometimes you have information that you want to bring on the map. So all the information that you have on your map, you can just drag and drop. And all this information will be available from you, from databases that are publicly available, wherever you end up working. So I know you don't have this info, but I just wanted to illustrate that we can bring this type of information. We can bring North Arrows if you want. So we just go and select. I 
I'm going to stop adding stuff because I know you are probably not here with me. But I do want you to go to File and Export Map. This is the way you will produce an image, an image that you can then plot or print or add to a report. And this is important because this is the way how you communicate the results from a design or the results from uh, a model that you have handled here to your boss. Okay, so when you are exporting, uh, you can save this. It's gonna ask you what format you want to save. You define the quality and you save it and that's it. I'm not gonna do it, but this is the way to save. Is there any questions so far? I'm sorry, I know you don't have some of this information, so I know you don't have that, you don't have that, you don't have that. Uh, but the important element is, this is how you're gonna go to whatever country I'll assign you and you're gonna place the points. So we need to be sure that you know how to place these points um, for uh, your final project. So I'm gonna close. I'm gonna delete some of this. Or you can just close the entire frame, that's fine. And we're gonna go back to view data view. You can just simply close uh, the RGIS. We are gonna work now uh, for the reminder of this uh, class. I still have another 30 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna open the shape file that is for Montreal. We have a little more information in there. So uh, please make sure you know where you have Montreal. I'm gonna share my screen again. And I'm gonna open our map again. I close it, I fully close it. You don't have to close it, but sometimes it's better because otherwise the old coordinate system might stick around and that coordinate system might distort things for you. So in my case, I have my Montreal database here. You see? So I know it is in this folder. I'm gonna close Excel. I'm gonna close this. While that opens, there is a manual, this one here, Civil 3D Training Manual, okay? And from that manual, I'm not sure I have it there, let me just open from here. From this manual, we have covered, uh, let me see, Um, I don't see it. I don't see it right now, the section we have covered. I will, I will find it out and, and just post it over a message. I apologize for that. I will post it later which section is uh, the one we have just covered now. Now, I want you to go in the catalog. Launch catalog. Go to the folder where you save Montreal. In my case, Montreal will be in uh, courses and CV471. In your case, I don't know, but you need to go to that specific location. Uh, 
and my shape file for Montreal is here. So I will take this, drag it, and drop it in there. This is how we started today, but I wanna show you a few more features of RGIS. If anybody is not with me, please let me know because I'm gonna look into something new now with this data set. So I need you to have this map on your screen. Without the map, you cannot do what I'm doing now. Okay, so we're gonna make a right click on top of the name Montreal here, which by the way, you can change the name, right? You can just make a double click and say, Ile de Montreal, if you prefer. Spanish speaker, you say Isla de Montreal. Okay. So you can change the name, but the point is make a right click and select properties. Right click and properties. And we are going to select the symbology. You have several tabs, but we're gonna work with the symbology. And in symbology, we're gonna select categories. Okay, so I'm gonna wait uh, to make sure everybody's with me. So right click on Montreal, properties, and then symbology. And then in symbology, find the field that is called type structure, type struct. That's the one we're gonna select. And then we're gonna say, we could say add values or we can say add all values. Let's see, if you click add values, it's gonna show you what values are available. So everything is flexible. There's no concrete pavements. If I say add values, it's gonna add everything that is available. Somebody wrote rigid pavement with small case, small font and rigid with capital R is one time. The rest is 9,360 times. There are two ways to go about it. One way is go and correct it. The other way is just assign the same color here. So let's say we're gonna assign the same color here. It's not the most elegant solution, but we can just double click on that one and select the same and double click on this one and select the same. And for flexible, we can double click and increase maybe the thickness. So now the flexible pavements will be shown as green and the rigid pavements will be shown as red. I'm gonna bring the thickness to two maybe for the rigid pavements. That's the thickness of the line. And I'm gonna click on okay. That will allows you to visualize where you have rigid pavements and where you have flexible pavement. This is just one of the many properties you have. And we can do this with anything that you want to visualize. For instance, we're gonna look at the table of attributes for a moment. And you will see that we have pavement condition index. So it'd be interesting to see where are the good roads and where are the bad, the poor roads. I see values of zero and five. That's very, very, very extremely bad. Anything less than 40 is a bad pavement that you need to reconstruct. We're gonna learn how to design it in October and November. And I see values as high as 97. So there are quite good roads. This is the year 2010. So what if we want to categorize and display them here on the map? Are you guys with me? I'm gonna make a right click. I'm gonna say properties. 
Now I will go to quantities. So I'm gonna wait. Uh, not necessarily, because uh, that's a long answer, uh, Paris. Uh, the PCI is just an easy way to communicate an understandable value in a scale zero to 100 to people who is non-technical, like the politicians or the public at large. Instead, we typically have other things like uh, cracking, uh, rutting, roughness, raveling, uh, uh, structural deflection, and other indicators that are actually more accurate to use and characterize. But for now, we could think a 40 or less is bad, a 40 to 60 is fair, or 40 to 70 maybe, and 70 and more is good, just for the sake of the example. So I will add here in the value, I will select the PCI from 2010. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult index, I can show you, if you are curious to know. Um, I was working on a new book. Uh, I will just open this for 10 seconds because it happens that I was working on a PCI index earlier today. Uh, I can show you one equation so it's clear in your head. Look, this is an equation to estimate a PCI. So it's based on the amount of rotting divided by a standard, multiplied by the crack area. And this portion on the left will account for the surface of the pavement up to there. And this portion on the right will account for the structural capacity of the pavement itself. So this will made up a uh, PCI, okay? We can talk later after the class, but that's just to clarify your question. Uh, so coming back, I'm in symbology. In symbology, I'm in quantities. I selected the PCI 2010, and I want three classes because the classes will be poor, fair, good. And I also want to specify what are those values. So let's say I will tolerate up to 40. If you don't like uh, the value of 40, then you can talk to Fares. He suggested 40. The value of 70, maybe Arash agree with me. And anything above uh, 70 is good. Now, I want to use the colors from a traffic light so that green is good. Red is bad, yellow is fair. Oh, my labels are gone because I changed the, the scale there. So let's put them again. This is poor. This is fair. And this is good. So let's say, okay. And now where you see yellow and red, you have pavements in bad condition from this criteria we just used now. Okay? And of course, you can zoom in and you can look at further characteristics of the segments. This is in Verdun. And you can go to the eye for identity and you can click on the specific road segment and you know it's flexible you know it has 1,905 cars per day, 571 trucks. It has a 31 PCI, is very bad, but this is the year 2010, so this is a bit old. Okay, so, so far, this is how you can use RGIS for some visual representation, okay? I want you guys now to go back into uh, Moodle I'm gonna do it myself as a matter of fact, and to download the database that we will use for the final project.
that database is here, is the one I'm pointing at. So I'm gonna give you a few, I'm gonna give you maybe 20 seconds. Go to Moodle and download that. How to download it? Sometimes Moodle is tricky. I don't know if the save link as will work. Yeah, so you make a right click and you say save link as. That will bring it down. And it's again, it's a compress, it's a zip file. So that means it has been shrink in a way to reduce the weight. You have to unzip when, when you have uh, downloaded. So please, this final project database, Please bring it down. In my case, I already did, but I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna put it on desktop. Not a good practice putting on desktop, but I'm gonna do it just for today. Actually, I'm just gonna put it on desktop there. I'm gonna say save. In desktop, I have it here. You see it's highlighted. It's called IHSM RGIS Database 2020. I'm gonna make a right click and I'm gonna say extract to IHSM. If you say extract here, it will put it with the rest. If you select extract to IHSM, etc., it will create a folder. So this is the folder that was created. And this is the information that is inside. I'm gonna wait a few seconds while you do that. Ah, this is very interesting. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna assume you all have downloaded this. So I'm gonna go to RGIS. I'm gonna close Montreal, I don't wanna use it anymore. I'm gonna say remove. So it's right click, remove. And I am gonna go to desktop and I'm gonna find the file that I just downloaded. This is the folder, you see? Uh, guys, there was a little mistake. Uh, you need to use the folder that is inside the folder that is called uh, IHSM RGIS Database 2019. You need to use that one. So please expand that one. And you will see one shape that is called Final Project Row Segments, but you will see other information. So I want you to bring all the info, E lanes, elevations, final project, rain zones, road collisions. Take it, drag it, drop it. Take it, drag it, drop it. It's okay, it says close. Take it, drag it, drop it. It's okay, it say close. Take, drag, close. Take, drag, close. In every of these, you just say close. It's because they have different coordinate systems. But RGIS will automatically adjust it. So you take each one by one and you drag it and drop it there. I'm gonna give you a few seconds while you do this. 
Can anybody confirm that you are actually following this? Thank you. Am I going too fast, Jean Michel? Okay, thanks. So, um, you see there are checkboxes. If the checkbox is there, it will put the information on the map. If you uncheck, it will remove it. Right now, I have a lot of info, so I want you to only keep one of them, road collisions. and the final project row segments. So only those two. Please, in the final project row segments, make a right click and select label features. This is gonna bring text labels. So you make a right click, and then you click on label features. This is gonna bring your names. How your names landed in there, because I put them in there. Why am I giving you those segments? Because those are segments with uh, quite a significant number of collisions, and that means that there are issues and you have to fix the road alignment and probably plan some realignment. You have to upgrade the road. Let's go and explore with a right click open attribute table. Oh, by accident, I dropped the attribute table there, but it's here. So you will see your segment, you will see your name, and even the student ID, just in case you are not sure is you. Okay, so these are the segments that each of you will have in the class. There were two emails coming across asking me if you can work on this uh, in groups. You can work in groups, yes, but the submission is individual. That means if Antoine, and Elias want to work together, section five and six, they can do it, but they have to submit separate segments to me. And I will grade those two segments separately. Why am I doing that? Nobody is asking, but you're probably thinking, uh, this is the best way for you to learn. If I give you one segment for five people, two of you will end up doing it and the other individuals will do less or only one part of it. And even if all of you work on it, still somebody will understand only one portion and the other one, only one other portion different. And I need you to understand everything because this class is very important for your professional life and is actually giving you the minimum so that you can keep on learning after it by yourself. All right, so we have the segments. Uh, actually, you see I highlighted those segments. I'm gonna uh, clear the selected right there. And what if I want to bring the density of collisions? And this is the last concept I will explain today. I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, who do we have here on the chat, by the way? Let me see. Okay, we have Abdullah. I haven't heard from Abdullah, but let's find where is Abdullah's segment. Let's sort this alphabetically. And Abdullah's segment is number 13. And is right here. So let's zoom into that segment. This is your segment.
okay? There is a special space gap here. You can fix that later on. But you see, you have some road collisions. So I want to bring into this segment how many road collisions I have. How do I do that? The road collisions will be here. And if I go into the road collisions file, I just make a right click, open attribute table. Right now I'm only visualizing. I'm doing just a visualization. I have the frequency and I have the severity. When the frequency is one, there's only one collision. As a matter of fact, I think one is the maximum. Yeah, I don't have any collision twice. The severity means there is a fatality or not. So if it is a 10, it's a fatality. So somebody got killed, unfortunately. And if it is a one, there was only an injury or property damage. So I want to make a summation for severity because the more severe, the more problematic the section is. So to do that, I will go to the shape that is a line. You can see that this is a line, right? These are the road segments. And I will make a right click. I'm gonna wait for you guys. And you will go to join and relate. And you will select join. I'm gonna wait again. I will presume everybody is following, but I'm just gonna redo it. Right click on the final road segments. This is the road segments. Join and relate, join. The join will bring this, this window. You have two ways to do a join. You can join information from a table. So you can prepare a table in Excel and bring it here. Or you can join from another base on a spatial location. We're gonna select the second option. That means based on proximity, it will bring the characteristics or the average or the summation of the events in the other file. So we're gonna select the second one. So click on that one. Remember we make a right click on the lines. So now the layer to join to this layer, which is the first item, will be the dots, the dots for collisions. So we need to change it. You need to click here and change it because it's gonna select the first one. But what we want is the road collisions. You can also bring the speed, A, the T, the lane width, the shoulder width, and other things from this later on. But for now, I'm gonna select the road collisions. Now, there are two methods. One is an intersection. That means the point is on the line. But if I show you, I'm just gonna close it. You hold on, but I will show you. If I zoom in, the point is not perfectly on the line. You see? The point is nearby, why? Because this is the center line of the road and this point was taken with a GPS from the ambulance that took care of this collision. If I go to the next one and I zoom in, you will see it's the same case. The point is not on the line, so I cannot select that. You guys, you are probably still on that window with the join, right? I'm hoping that's the case. So you are still here. As you can see, I cannot select the intersected because this is not intersected. The point is not on top of the line. I need to select the closest to it. And if you remember, I was saying that I will add all the collisions so that I know if on that segment there are five, eight, 10 collisions. And also I will add, this, I will do the summation of severity. So the higher the value, the more fatalities, the lower the value, the less fatalities. So it is the summation, the characteristic I want.
guys, I know I'm probably dumping a lot of information, but uh, this gives me opportunities to give other info like when will we ever use average minimum, maximum standard deviation of variance. So the average will be used when you have points with condition. Yes, if you created the points from the lines, you will know that the points are on the line. But the most, the 90% of the times is the closest. Now, I was trying to tell you when will you use the other options. In this case, we're only going to use Zoom. But average will come, this one, when you have multiple points and those points are the condition of the road. Some damage characteristic, so you want to get an average. The minimum and the maximum will be for roadway lighting, for illumination. When you have the amount of artificial light that is coming from the luminaires, you want to know what is the minimum and the maximum. That characteristic is called illuminance. When you have illumination as well, you might need to know about the variance because there is something called uniformity of the illumination and is related to how much variation you have in terms of visibility. So average is typically for condition, and this is typically for uh, roadway illumination. This is for roads, right? But you can apply this in areas for forest, rain. So if you have rain zones, you will apply the average to get the average of rain from the points into an area. So it could be for other purposes. For now, it's to mention. The next option is saying, each line will be given all the attributes of the point that is closest to it. We are not going to use that. Because right now, I want a summation of the characteristics from the points. I will use the other one soon, OK? And it is asking you, where do you want to save this and how you want to call it? In my case, I'm going to save this. This is a, another uh, something else. I'm going to put it here on desktop. And I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to call it delete because I don't want it. It's just, a, it's just a sample. And I'm going to say OK. So please go ahead and say OK. If you don't give it an If you have a new shape file on the left list in my case is called delete sample in your case maybe it's called differently if you didn't get it please let me know Okay, so let's open the table of attributes. Open attribute table. Oh, I joined it with the incorrect file because I reopened. Sorry, guys. This is my mistake. I'm just going to redo it quickly because I, op I closed and opened when I was explaining.
while this finish, I'm going to tell you a quick story. One time I had to wait eight hours overnight for one of these processes to go through. Okay, here we go. So in this case, I didn't put a name, so it's called join output. I'm going to open the table of attributes and I'm going to assume you are here. You see the summation of frequency and the summation of severity? Now we can sort. How do we sort? You can just double click on the label. If you double click again, it's going to sort again. So in one case from smaller to largest, in the other case from larger to smallest. In terms of frequency, you can do the same. And there will be a summation of other things that I don't care about. If I go to road collisions and I look at the non-on properties the table of attributes, I see I have one second, please. I have five thousand two hundred and forty four points. So 5,244 collisions. Don't do this. This is just for me to double check if the numbers I'm getting are correct. So the final road project when I open, uh, no, not that one, sorry, the joint. When I open the joint, I have 690 collisions in some segments. These segments are 31 kilometers. And they are roughly between 29 and 31 kilometers. So that means you have 690 collisions in 31 kilometers. We can also get the density of collisions if you want per kilometer. So we can just say add field. We can call it density. I'm not expecting you to be doing this. I'm expecting you to just have obtained the table I have on the background. And we can put the density. And then for the density, we can make a right click field calculator and we can say summation of frequency divided over the length. And this is the number of collisions per kilometer. So 21 collisions per kilometer is the maximum, and then drop in. So I'm not expecting you to do this, okay? But at least you learn how to do a join. Is there a question? Okay, so I'm out of time. As far as I know, we finish at 4.30, so it's 4.29. Uh, I appreciate your time, guys. Uh, there will be another section coming. There will be another section coming at 5:30. If you miss something, you arrive late, or you want to refresh some of these concepts, I'm gonna cover almost the same material. Maybe to don't get bored, I will do slightly different things. Uh, but uh, if you want to, that's an opportunity to have a look into uh, the lecture again. I will try to see first time I'm recording, so I will try to post this on Google uh, and YouTube and let you know later. Have a good day, guys. Bye for now.